Absolutely. Hichar Noguera uh, victorious over Kennedy Maciel yesterday. Definitely a, uh, a, a force to be reckoned with in any division is Hichar Noguera. Hasn't quite had the results he's looking for at no, the very let's large No, let's call it like it is. Richard Noguera is one of the guys that you least want to see on your side of the bracket. Why? Because he's what they call a landmine. You get that guy in your bracket, and you, you, you run across that guy, there's a good chance it's going to go very, very bad for you. He's one of those incredibly, incredibly disruptive presences in any bracket because you're right. He doesn't have the major accolades to his name, but he is absolutely capable of beating very, very high-level competitors and often doing so in upset victories. And that means that Shane Jamil Hill-Taylor is going to need to be on top of his game for this match. Absolutely. And you may notice that the referee gave both competitors a penalty. If both competitors pull guard at the same time and there is no uh, comeuppance, I guess I should say, for... 20 seconds or more uh 20 seconds then the referee will award a penalty for each competitor for a lack of activity as you see he's about to do again if a competitor does not decide to come up and engage top position he'll be awarded a penalty and now both competitors receive their second penalty and a little note about the last time that these two met in the pan championships 2021 ibjjf pans Richard Nogueira was actually disqualified against Jamil Hill-Taylor because of a reap. So I'm sure for Richard Nogueira, he's going to be very eager to get this one back. But they are now two penalties each. They can have three penalties. After that, any further penalties will result in a DQ. So we'll see how the game goes at this stage of the match because now... Jamil, full guard position. And that's he's a scary known, place to be. He's known for his lasso, though, right? That's the thing that everybody knows Jamil for. You can see immediately opens the close guard, gets that lasso hook in, and this is this is what I think everybody's excited to see because Jamil's lasso game is incredible. It is very, it is very, very sharp, and I mean, one of the few. I, uh, we can count on one or two hands, maybe two hands, the amount of American black belt world champions there are. Uh, and I think that one of the keys to Hichara in this match is if he's going to go in to defend the lasso guard, or if he's going to come out to defend the lasso guard, he needs to make a choice and he needs to stay consistent with it. Because Shane is very knowledgeable about all the ways that somebody can escape the lasso guard as well. And Hichara is going to need to really stay consistent on not allowing him to get super caught up deep. He needs to preemptively escape or preemptively put himself in a position to escape. Like we oh, see right there. Oh, wow, big explosion from Richard Nogueira. It's not often you see somebody escape from Jamil's lasso guard like that. But he briefly was able to get out, but Jamil immediately puts the lasso hook back in. I don't say you have to imagine that Hichar went into this match with that game plan, knowing that the lasso was going to be a stumbling block he of had course, to get over. Of course, it's no secret. <laughs> so yeah, no. Jamil's literally got the lasso syndicate Printed on his gi. It's a pretty common knowledge that you're going to go against Jamil. The lasso hook's going to be a threat. So Richard will obviously be very aware of that. He'll uh, he'll be well prepared for it. And this lasso spider that Jamil is playing from bottom, he has options that he can take his opponent in various directions with this. But right now, seems content in in feeling the direction that that Nogueira is going and hasn't really initiated any attacks just yet. Yeah, I think that one, one cool thing about having the lasso and the spider is you force your opponent to deal with the lasso first. They can't actually deal with the spider guard hook uh, unless you're negligent with the placing of it. He has to deal with that lasso, and then you can just throw another lasso on the other side, or you can throw up a submission in the meantime. It's a very, uh, it's a very versatile position. This lasso guard position. Let's see exactly what Nogueira's answer to this lasso is. Right now it's forward pressure and circling around. I'm really intrigued to see how Jamil initiates any attacks from here. As a mind, you see that it seems like Hichar's big idea is to pass away from the side of the lasso. But the problem you just saw there with passing away from the lasso is sometimes you get taken off balance with the lasso sweep itself. So he, uh, it's, it's just going to be very difficult for Hichar to 
unless he is free from that lasso to pass to that side. We're nearing about the halfway minute, or the halfway point of this match. Big forward pressure from Nogueira, but that spider hook right there in the bicep. I like the way that he managed to, uh, to take that out. He used his knee to pop the heel out from the bicep. It's a small technical detail that I think anybody can, can learn from. And this is one of the best things about watching high level competitive jujitsu is that you can see highly effective techniques being utilized in extremely competitive situations. So if you know that they work here, you know that they could work for you in the gym or should you go into a competition as well, right? It's like a really big study guide being able to watch the, the absolute highest level of the sport. And if you can really pay attention to, I would say, just the principles of who's fighting what side. You notice that Jamil's right side is fighting Hichar's left side and Hachar's right side is fighting Jamil's left side. And that is sort of one of the basic principles of jiu-jitsu. And if you can pay attention to how they're both articulating that point, how they're both approaching that point, you'll learn a lot about balance. You'll learn a lot about grip placement. You'll learn a lot about uh, methodology of attacking people. It's very interesting. And that applies to Nogi as well. You see Shane is doing a great job of just isolating both ways that Hichar can go. And now Hichar is forced to make a choice. Does he deal with the spider guard on the right or does he deal with the lasso on the left? It's a very difficult situation to be in. Still 0-0 zero, zero on the board. Just those accumulated penalties and advantages for the uh, the earlier double guard pull resets. Three minutes remaining in this match. And it's important to note that the score is completely tied, and Hichar has been trying to pass the guard the entire time. He has been trying to escape the lasso the entire time. And that's something that I think that as the match grows closer and the score is still tied, that's something we're going to need to really pay attention to. trying to get around the leg with his face as Sachar Noguera is trying to peek around that corner. But as soon as he peeks around the corner, every single time, Jamil throws that lasso in. And he prevents, via the lasso, Hichar's ability to completely turn around the side for the pass. This flexible open guard from Jamil Hill is Oh, there we go. There was a use of the brief use of the De La Hiva in trying to elevate Nogueira. Still 0 0, tied on the advantages and penalties. And you're right, Jake. I feel like at this late stage in the match, with just over 60 seconds remaining, in cases such as this, the, um, the decision will often go to the person on top because they're considered to be pressing forward more, advancing more, initiating more. And if Jamil doesn't get a substantial attack or a significant attack at this late stage in the match, Nogueira could win this. But look at this. This is the infamous Gubba guard, the Gi rubber guard that Jamil Hill is credited with inventing. And you see Nogueira hoisting Jamil up. Oh my goodness. It looks like he's going to try to get an X choke over the top here. He's actually going for a cross collar choke as well using that Gi Gubba guard. 
This is an incredible secure position, the way that he's able, he is literally hanging off Richard Aguirre's neck, but the moment that he lets go of the grip, they drop down. And Manuel Hibamar is in the corner, screaming, urging Richard Aguirre to go forward. Now we see an Oma Plata attack from oh, Jamil Hitchard. Hill. Passing over to the, trying to pass over the other side off of it. Jamil Hill very active with his guard now, throwing up multiple attacks. And, you know, there's a big... I said it earlier, this guy is a landmine in any bracket, the number eight seed. Richard Aguero representing Rodrigo Pinheiro, BJJ takes that.